Hey gang, it's Chris, and here's what I've been thinking about. I took part in a great discussion yesterday on Twitter about diversity in science fiction and fantasy. This is a subject I think is very important. Whether it's books, movies, TV, or other media, works of science fiction and fantasy routinely depict fantastic other worlds, dramatically different from our own, and populated almost entirely by straight, white, cisgendered people. In works of fantasy, they're generally playing out loose adaptations of Western European mythology and folklore, whereas science fiction often adapts storylines and concepts from other Western genres. Gene Roddenberry, for one, described the original Star Trek as a wagon train across space, and Joss Whedon's Firefly, which for the record I am not citing as a bad example, was conceived and written as a Western set in space. Writers and fans of science fiction and fantasy are known to be a defensive bunch. Maybe because many of us were bullied in our youth, we tend to regard any criticism of the things we care about as bullying and respond with anger and aggression. But what this ends up doing is turning us into an entitled, closed-minded in-group, intolerant of any criticism of our dogma, and openly hostile to outsiders who may question the status quo. In other words, we become the bullies. It's something I have tried to prioritize in my own writing. If you've read my short story, Nene of the Bayou, that originated with a very deliberate attempt to write a protagonist who was very different from myself. So one of the first questions that gets asked in any discussion about diversity in science fiction and fantasy is why is this important? A lot of writers and readers are perfectly fine with stories about homogenized groups of adventurers, and when the discussion begins, many people immediately start crying about political correctness. So why is diversity important? For starters, readers come in all varieties, and I think it's an honorable motive for a work of fiction to try and represent the people who are going to be reading it. I've heard more than one black author say that as a child, it took them so long to read a story about a black protagonist, they spent a lot of time thinking fiction had to be about white people. I also think bringing diversity into fiction can help readers, especially young readers, understand people who are different from them. A kid like myself, growing up in a predominantly white suburb, might rarely encounter people of color in their day-to-day -day life, but might gain some understanding of the experience of people different from them through fiction. Sort of the way Margaret Atwood's classic book, The Handmaid's Tale, might help a man understand what it's like to be a woman living in a religious society that dictates your value based on your reproductive capacity and appearance. Reading books with gay, lesbian, or transgendered heroes might help young children who haven't yet recognized their own queer identity develop positive self-images and avoid the years of shame and self-loathing that some of us had to go through. But introducing diversity also brings the author new ideas and new territory to explore. As I said on Twitter, the idea of fantasy based on Western European myth and legend and folklore has been a little tired for about 30 years now. A work of epic fantasy that drew on folklore from Sioux or Inuit, Mongolian, or any other heritage from around the world might be really interesting and new. Yes, it might require a little more work from authors who've been steeped in Western European mythology, but that's also an incentive for publishers to embrace diversity by publishing works from authors who don't necessarily hail from a Western European heritage. Some other thoughts for authors or readers looking to embrace diversity in science fiction and fantasy? I think it's important to recognize that diversity is not tokenism. That is, introducing one or two characters from a more exotic extraction just so that you can say your work is diverse. Often these characters play very minor roles and might even be the first ones to die. I think it's also important to avoid the typical science fiction and fantasy tropes. The Magical Negro, for instance, is a trope in which a white protagonist meets an exotic, usually black character, often simple or uneducated or otherwise naive, who helps that white character realize that he or she has had the power to overcome their obstacles the whole time and then conveniently disappears. Think The Legend of Bagger Vance, The Green Mile, or yes, even The Shawshank Redemption. How do you know if you're writing a magical negro? Chances are your black or otherwise exotic character has no real complexity or conflict of their own. They're just there to teach your white characters a lesson and then fade off into the sunset. A similar trope is the noble savage, in which a character is brought from a primitive or undeveloped society into a civilized one, much more similar to the reader's own. But this character, despite being uneducated and naive, turns out to be much more virtuous than the civilized people around him, and all the white people learn a valuable lesson. As with any trope, I'm not saying you can't use these and still write a good story. I am a huge fan of the Shawshank Redemption. But if you are going to rely on these tropes, you better realize what you're doing and have a damn good reason. I also think it's important to consider that a character's conflict need not stem from the ways they're different from the norm. Like for the first 20 years there were gay characters on TV, every single story about those characters stemmed from the fact that they were either ashamed of the fact that they were gay, hiding the fact that they were gay, gonna kill themselves because they were gay. But there's no reason you can't have, say, a detective character who just happens to be gay, and the conflict has nothing at all to do with their sexuality, but just has to do with ordinary detective stuff. As a writer, you're not obligated to explain why a character is different from the norm. Like, straight, white, and cisgendered aren't the default settings for human beings. I think a lot of us fall into that trap because we've been exposed to so much media that's dominated by straight, white, cisgendered people that we start to regard that as like the default model for human beings and anything else is an exotic add-on. 
But people just are who they are and they don't have to explain it. I guess transgender people do often find themselves expected to explain why they're transgender, but that's wrong and that's a separate issue. Frankly, I think if your fantasy novel is set in an exotic world full of dragons and elves and sea monsters, and all the heroes that we encounter are a homogenized group of white straight people, that might be the thing that requires explaining. Lastly, I'd suggest that in your efforts to introduce diversity into your speculative fiction, you not accidentally reinforce certain stereotypes. Like, don't make all your super intelligent, logical Vulcans white, and all your irrational, angry, violent Klingons black. I realize you may not intend to reinforce these stereotypes, but we're all sort of pre-programmed by what we've been exposed to our whole lives, and those things just sneak in there when you're not even thinking about it. I think the first time I tried to introduce a black character into a work of fantasy I was writing, I ended up making him a magical negro, a noble savage, and making him stronger and quicker tempered than all the other characters. Luckily that never got published. So as a reader or a writer of science fiction or fantasy, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on introducing diversity into the genre. Do you have any really good or bad examples or specific lessons that you think it's important for people to learn? Please do share those down in the comments section. I'll be back next week, hopefully with a bunch of video I'm editing from my vacation last week. So until then, thanks for watching, thanks for thinking, and thanks for not using stupid expressions like politically correct.